Hello and welcome back to another guide for War Tales. My name is Heiken and today we're taking a look at uh, the money making guide or the ultimate gate to money making. I will teach you three foolproof methods of making money in War Tales and go through all of the little details that you need to know about how to become wealthy in the game. I have had a couple of questions asked uh, for the actual money that I am having in this safe game. I want to showcase to you how I did it. So. Join me when we're exploring the world of money making. A word of advice. A wise man once said in order to gain money, you actually need to first learn how to save money. So if you're looking at the three dumps of money in War Tales, as in the game is extracting money from you, it is wages of your companions, it is the repair of your armor, and it is the food. And for all three of them, I just want to highlight a couple of things that you should know. Number one, let's start with the wages. There are a couple of ways of reducing wages. Frugality is one of that, so that's already a 10% reduction right there. And number two, cooperative, is the second one. That's another 10% reduction. And believe me, 20% reduced wages will go a very, very long way over the course of an entire campaign. Mind you, as adventurers become more seasoned, they will also have more wages that they are asking for. And if you just can keep it to an absolute minimum, that'll make your day way, way more enjoyable. Secondly, we're seeing that the armor repair costs a lot of money. And really the trick with the armor repair is to maximize the armor repair value that you're getting. There are a couple of things of how you can do that relatively easy. One of the advanced knowledge talents that will cost you two knowledge points will allow you to get more restoration. So five points of additional armor instead of 10, 15. Then in the path of war, you get another five points. So that is one of the first orders that I'm skilling. So you're already up to 20 armor repair, but that is not all. Way down at the bottom of your compendium, you're seeing regional knowledges and every single one of these regional knowledges that you can gain once you finish the region will help you to get an additional 10% uh, 10 armor points. That means if you do all of the six regions that I did in this case, you are getting a plus whooping 60 on your repair. So my tools repair 80 per pop, which overall means you require less tools and it will be cheaper. The same bonus applies for all of the blacksmiths, so they benefit from it as well. General word of advice for repairing and or healing. If you are near a town, consider using the repair here instead of the tools. That'll always save you money. Second little tip, if you noticed that you have lost, say in my case, I'm repairing 80, that you've lost only 50 points of armor, the game will suggest to you that you're using tools. I would disagree. Small scratches at the armor are typically not the biggest problem, so you might want to save the tool. There is no using of half a tool, unfortunately. And finally, food, which is an important one as well. So uh, rationing is the first way of reducing food that is in the companion for three less food. Then again, under the power and glory, you find another reduction of three food with strict rationing. And finally, under the Mysteries and Wisdom uh, war, uh, Pass, you will find Asceticism, which is another three reduction. So we're already clocking in nine reduction. If we're adding on top of that an upgraded cooking pot, which I would recommend to you to upgrade as soon as possible, one of the best items, you have another reduction of six. So that's 15 food saved. Later in the game, there are a couple of other small options. The Cradle of Souls, for instance, is one of uh, the items that you will get for actually completing the uh, paths, in this case, the Mystery and Wisdom Pass on level 12. And that uh, gives one of your companions uh, saturated, which means they won't eat at all. On the ship, you also get another five reduction of food. And from time to time, you get uh, bonuses like this here, the well, where you get a reduction of the food uh, on top of it. So to give you a perspective, my uh, level 12 party here, 
uh, just the seven base characters would have a single digit food consumption between six and nine, depending on the situation. So that means there's almost no food spent. You can optimize it with using the campfire. Just put a couple of uh, people around the campfire. Uh, don't give them a, a lot to eat. Uh, just manage your happiness, but make sure that you give them uh, something to eat every once in a while, two to three days, so that they're not eating the ponies. And that's really it. If you're managing it, you won't have a lot of outflow in terms of food. So those were the saving tips. Let's move on to the actual money-making tips. So I decided to showcase the three ways of making money from the ones that are available immediately at the beginning of the game towards the ones that are more end game focused. What you can do over time is upgrade your money making uh, skills in the game. And once you do have the basis set up, you can make exponentially more money. The first thing that you can do from the very beginning is doing contracts. Uh, emissary posts will offer you contracts in every single uh, tavern and they are typically relatively well paid. Before you jump into those uh, though, I would recommend that you're giving a couple of um, skills a specific look. More specifically, we are looking at the trades in craftsmanship negotiations possibility to negotiate missions on the list of bounties. I typically take that after long distance running and uh, cooperative, I'm already going there. So the moment that you get enough influence, that is one way of trading influence for more money and it is incredibly good. The second one that I would be recommending is uh, access to assassination missions. Uh, that's potentially the second thing that I'm skilling after backstabbing. I'm going to Assassins in the Making and it will allow more missions uh, that are typically as well paid but relatively straightforward. So once we go into the actual missions, what you will see is a list of potential contracts and you can see there are three assassination missions already so that in itself is just coming from the assassination tab and what we can do in this case is work we can not only accept it but if you do have the opportunity to negotiate you can uh, just negotiate the price up from uh, originally uh, a little bit less than 200 uh, to 372. So we've just doubled the price. Uh, there is our mission. We're uh, rinsing and repeating. Uh, just keep in mind the cost for that increases. So you might not always want to uh, spend the uh, influence to do that. But if you do have a little bit of influence to spare, maybe it's uh, just negotiating twice and then accepting uh, the offer and there you go. So what we uh, what we did in that really short skit is we got three very closely related assassination missions and in a normal uh, playthrough what you can and should do is get most of those missions as you're anyways exploring the areas. It's one additional fight, you're getting a lot of bounty out of it. So if I would be doing those three, that's 310 plus 380, so that's already uh, 700. Uh, that's 1,200 gold pieces just for doing three little battles. And if I anyways need to go into these areas, that's a pretty good uh, payoff. I could do, do those in one adventuring day, maybe even less uh, than that. And uh, the current wages are 380, so I'm making a hefty profit out of it. If you are using that method, keep in mind that the respawn of uh, this year takes a while. So there is uh, definitely a time in between when you finish the missions and when new missions come in. The assassination missions, however, make that easier. So there will be simply more missions available. You have seen that there is also there are also tradecraft missions, which are going to be leading nicely into our next subject, which is money-making method number two. So when thinking about making money with trade routes, there are a couple of things that you should consider. Number one, it is important to get the most movement out of your day that you can possibly get. And number two, you want to maximize your carrying capacity because really what that does is you can buy as many trade goods as you want and then get them over to the next area. And number three, in order to get more margins out of it, you want to gain the most benefit from uh, trading goods. So let's look at all of these three things together. 
Depending on the difficulty, firstly, your bar of fatigue will go down quicker. On extreme difficulty, it's actually relatively quick. I'm playing on expert difficulty here, so it's again relatively quick. And on novice difficulty, it is not as quick. So one easy way of fixing it, if you want to make more money, is just put the survivability on novice for a while and make money that way. No offense, no harm, no foul, if you want to play that way. There are a couple of other ways of preventing fatigue gain and most of them come down to the right food. I cooked a couple of meals as a preparation. I just wanted to uh, show them uh, to you. Number one would be the apple pancake, which is a recipe that you get in Tiltron. Uh, reduces the speed at which the troop fatigue sticks by 30%. That already is great. And then other one would be a cabbage perch, which you uh, would get a little bit later in the game where the run duration is increased by 10%. So the longer you can run, uh, the less fatigue you're going to generate. And then uh, Trapper's Fondue would increase the movement speed in the world by 10%. On top of that, there are a few options to further increase the speed, but let's look at the legendary food uh, first. Culture Shock gives you basically an apple pancake plus a couple of extra things. So you can see here that the troops fatigue uh, stacks is reduced by 35%. These are not stacking, so they are mutually exclusive. Another one would be the Broker's Table, a new recipe from the DLC, where there is a bonus run speed. Then the purchasing price of trade goods are reduced by 20% and on top of it happiness, which is irrelevant for our case. So um, if you can afford it, make sure that you have at least one meal. For the starter, if you're poor, just stick with the apple pancakes and you're going to be fine. All of what you need can be found in Tiltron and it's really just a good recipe all around. Now, how can you make sure that you're moving faster? There are a couple of ways of doing that. Number one would be horseshoes. These uh, bonuses stack on top of each other. So if you're going down the trade route, you might want to consider buying not only two, three or four ponies, but even a little bit more than that. It becomes cumbersome because at some point you need to feed all of them. But I think a sweet spot, at least from my experience, if you want to go into the trading business, was around four ponies. That'll give you plenty of carry capacity, specifically if you skill them in the passive fashion, you're having a lot of carry capacity and with a high constitution, it looks uh, very good. How can you speed up even further though? Well, for starters, you could use the banner once you do have it and purchase overflowing motivation, which is a stacking reduction of the fatigue by 25% on top of that. Number two, you can skill in the companion uh, run, which is a stable basic for actually running. Number two, endurance training where the troop is improving its stamina and therefore has 5% more movement speed in the world, period. Number three, under deep knowledge, you can go for seasoned travelers to reduce uh, the speed of fatigue stack by another 10%. Number four, not surprisingly, under the trades and craftsmanship uh, war, uh, pass, you will find long distance running for 20% movement speed on the roads. Combine that with an increase of carry capacity and a trade horses for additional carry capacity to actually maximize what you can carry. And finally, add mysteries and wisdom path for run duration increase by 20%. So all of that is cumulative from the different bonuses and should give you a really, really healthy bar, which you can use for a long run. So now that you know how to run for a long time, uh, let's shortly look at the carry capacity. We already f uh, featured uh, the horses, which is the safest bet for it. We already featured a couple of path items. There are a few more that you should be aware of. Weighted training, for instance, is just one basic knowledge uh, can give you more carry capacity or just generally having large animals. However, there is a trade-off because large animals also cost more food. And now number three, how do you maximize your profit uh, with uh, this strategy? Let's start again at the banner where we do have uh, the trade fair uh, option, sale price of crafted items. If you do have that uh, would increase by 50%. You could, by the way, also increase the carry capacity here by another 50, uh, just in case uh, you need more carry capacity for that run. 
And then under the trades and craftsmen path, you will find suppliers and skillful merchants, which will be the bread and butter for what you're trying to do. Purchase price of trade goods reduced by 10% and sale price of trade goods increased by 10%. So once you uh, are making money with that, these two are actually incredibly, uh, incredibly good. They together will add up very, very quickly. So make sure that you are increasing your margins. So once we have all of that together, what's actually going to be our impact? Good. Now that we have rested and already we're going to the market and we're actually starting our adventure. So we do have around 320 uh, come, come. weight Take available and there are online spreadsheets that will go through all of uh, the details of how to optimize this but the reality is oftentimes you will just need to take whatever is available so you're buying uh, with your hopefully already existing money from contracts you're going to buy trade goods and since you can already see that uh, they are not having enough trade goods one of the things that you will run into a little bit later in the game is you still need to fill up uh, with more trade goods. I have done that over time, just brought a lot of trade goods here and we're going to uh, say fill up the reminder, uh, remainder of that. So we bought for 30 to 50 uh, with, what we have, uh, with what we have just purchased and let's see just uh, what our selling prices are. We want, uh, we want to go all the way to almost the maximum uh, that we can carry. That way we're not going to waste any carry speed. And then we want to take a look at what is optimal from a movement perspective. So a couple of trade routes. So for starters, when you uh, start off, you won't have the option to just go through border passes. You either need to pay the 200 once or finish uh, the quest area which is why i said make sure that you're starting maybe with a couple of bounties instead of trade routes but once you do have the first three areas ready at your disposal i personally like a trade route between tiltran and arthur's and then back all the way up to tiltran and virtues this trade route is an absolute stable and you can uh, just run from one direction to the other so what we want to do is want to make sure that we're going exactly in the right direction and we want to uh, mm, utilize all of our sprinting. Now, uh, you can be faster than what I'm showing here, but you can see compared to the guards, if we're just sticking at the uh, road, we're not going to be in a lot of uh, trouble. We're even outrunning them with uh, mm, the sprinting mechanics. Pro tip, if you want to be even a little bit faster, those uh, pythons here, if you're uh, quick with them, can reset your stamina bar. But the main point is you don't want to uh, sway too far away from actually running uh, because the street itself will heavily, heavily increase your movement speed and you will be in the uh, city of Arthur's in no time. So you can see that our fatigue is almost not moving at all this is the second hardest difficulty that you're uh, currently seeing so you should have no problem with the right uh, specialization to get in a long long trading day and that'll maximize your profits so you don't even need a lot of uh, food uh, stored a few of the meals uh, will uh, already be good enough for you to uh, essentially move from one city to the other and we're now in Corthia. So let's take a look at our profits that we're going to, uh, that we're going to see in the market. So we bought a four in around uh, oh, 35 uh, and we're selling for twice uh, the amount. In case of pottery, we bought for 50 and we're selling for 111. That means every single uh, one of these goods that I'm selling is 100% uh, profit from what we're getting. On top of it, you, when you do have trading quests, and I had a couple of trading quests uh, in uh, this particular region, uh, you will, on top of it, uh, gain uh, more money with just trading. So the trading quests uh, will add profit to that. For instance, here, 
we now need to sell two perfumes um, and if we find perfumes we would uh, get money with that as well and then rinse and repeat really uh, we're loading up uh, with ge uh, gems for 70 spices and a couple of pelts so uh, that will uh, just be the uh, trading goods that we are buying here of course we could carry them around for a longer period of time but oftentimes uh, you just want to maximize uh, the gain of money in real life time so what you want to do is spend as little time as possible uh, in just setting all of that up once you do have it set up make sure that you're just running from one city to the other and that's trading in a nutshell uh, let's move on to the last method of making money so the last method of making money which is by far the most lucrative is stealing you will need to prepare a little bit for that but once you are ready to steal and bear the consequences you will swim in money i have chosen one particular sweet spot that worked for me very well in the past um, here at the bottom of arthur's where there is a brotherhood training ground and a bandit's lair where you can fence wares just relatively close uh, to each other there are a couple of ways of optimizing uh, stealing there are trinkets that will allow you to um, use or have a chance of stealing goods not counting for uh, stolen goods there are a couple of uh, skills in the actual crime and chaos path that will allow you to uh, lose suspicion a little bit faster but the basic of it really doesn't matter all too much the core concept in the game is still that stealing is incredibly lucrative over a long period of time until they patched it you could simply steal wares then pay a marginal fine uh, because uh, the fine was always uh, accumulated based on the number of items you stole uh, you've stolen and not on their actual value so naturally you were going for That's skill books and uh, were just Completely stealing those hopeless. and then pay off the fine the they've patched mistake. it since but Learn there is still skills. a existing normal that interaction that you can use in order to uh, still maximize your profit so Whenever I am at one of uh, those uh, vendors, whether that's in the arena or whether that's somewhere else, uh, then really what we want to do is we're wanting to sell all of our existing skill mastery books. Then we're going into stealing. And uh, really what we then want to do is we want to uh, hold control and steal the entire stack. You can see how suspicion has just um, moved up and we're going to steal all the way until we're really at maximum suspicion now there are a couple of ways of now dealing with uh, the uh, fact that you do have stolen goods the easiest one of which is you just find a bandit's lair that acts as a fencing uh, lair the quickest one down here is the one that i'm going to show you and you can see that uh, once you have liberated this uh, you can easily uh, mm, uh, sell the skill books uh, here without a problem so they are taking anything and everything and mind you you can even steal those uh, books uh, on top of it uh, as well uh, pro tip by the way they also take uh, mm, uh, sales uh, goods so you can see I've uh, stolen a lot in the past, which is uh, why you're see, uh, seeing so many books here. So you can even steal from them again and um, uh, continue to pile up essentially books, making that stack larger and larger until eventually you are going to uh, get to ludicrous numbers. When I was doing it, my stack was over 200. These are the leftovers. I have a lot of uh, the actual books um, in uh, my uh, possession in the, uh, in the trading chest. Now, say you wouldn't want to sell it here, but you want to regularly sell it and you still have a stack of stolen books. I'll just take that one book here as an example for it. You can, in that case, simply use your thief. Um, in uh, this case, we want uh, to use the warrior here. And places in uh, front of the camp chest. You put your items uh, that you want to launder in there. And over time, the thief will launder it. Fun fact, even if you do have a very, very large uh, stack of items, they will still launder it in a relatively quick amount of time. So there is really 
uh, not much time uh, time pressure behind it and once it's laundered you can regularly sell it to a merchant um, either at the brotherhood or at uh, the um, actual arenas uh, the one arena would be here arthur's harbor uh, and you can then rinse and repeat uh, word of advice you need level four in the power of glory pass to even be able to get skill mastery books they are typically the most valuable ones which is why i mentioned this trick will only work a little bit later in the game so what are you going to do if you do have five stars of suspicion you ask because that is a problem as well well great great that you asked i will show you exactly how to handle that because that brings us to the last loophole of how to get away with a murder in this game essentially whenever you are in a situation where you do have five stars you do have two options you either sit it off and let the wand level go down it needs to go down to a little bit less than four stars for you to again steal larger stacks can be stolen even if you do have uh, four stars because only what counts is the number of suspicion that you have when you're starting the stealing process not the amount that it gives you so in other words if you steal a stack of uh, 50 books with four um, suspicion you will end up with six suspicion as beforehand you can uh, stay in that amount of suspicion but at some point you might not want to run into the guards and you feel uneasy about it now there is an easy way of going around that um, i recommend that you already do have one or two of the travel posts you can get those travel posts after finishing an area i assume if you follow my uh, step guide you do have a travel post in Arthur's you do have a travel post in Tiltred and one in the Retrus province that gives you in each of those uh, traveling posts uh, three slots to leave a companion and that's going to be important you can see I do have a couple of companions all over the place for the, the right or the wrong reasons and you want to have enough uh, space to store your entire party now this will not really work with a 40 person party because you have too many companions but even then i do have an idea of how to solve it you want to go down all the way until you do have only say one person left but still space you're either then going to go and uh, go into uh, the jails of uh, this world children jail is a perfect option and are starting to hire two of the prisoners there the other option is you simply start to hire new adventurers in the inn um, then you put your last uh, um, original adventurer in the travel post you want to have two adventurers at least and then you're just going to the guards and really what you're doing is the guards offer you to accuse a single individual of the group this individual is a randomly taken and um, you can send them off wherever you want um, make sure that you have prepared yourself there are a couple of variations of that that uh, that work equally well so variation number one is you can just keep your original party accuse a single person in the party they will go to jail you go to the jail and you uh, basically rehire them which costs you exactly 80 gold that's the poor man's version however this is only going to work on anything but extreme difficulty on extreme difficulty the companion is gone and can never be reclaimed keep that in mind which is why i gave you the foolproof strategy first which would be saving all of your companions in the uh, outposts in uh, in the travel outposts, and then essentially making sure that you hand yourself in um, so that you're not running into trouble if you don't like either of these options i do have a third option for you which is the option of animal companions now if uh, theoretically animal companions can be selected by the random selection and that means you just need to hire a lot of animal companions um, you will fight a few fights always get as many or animal companions as possible reduce the number of your actual um, your actual warband as much as possible and then go to the guards and just by sheer um, chance the chance will be higher than one of the animal companions is taken rinse and repeat for maximum effect uh, so that all of the animals end up in jail whilst uh, you are swimming in money 
whatever path you are choosing at the end of the day this is an incredibly lucrative method and you can make 150 to 200 thousand gold pieces per hour if you do it uh, long enough you will end up with a lot of money i hope that was educative for you if you enjoyed what you've seen today if you enjoyed uh, war tales guides do me a favor leave a comment and a like down below to quote unquote pay back a little bit of uh, the um, uh, gains that you had from this video and if you are interested in other guides i do have a lot of uh, them on my channel feel free to check them out other than that safe traveling and enjoy your newfound money bye bye